Hey there, all you EM transporters out there. Today we're going to go over a drug profile, and I'm pulling this drug profile from my lecture that I'm going to give in October 3rd, October 4th, 2014 at the EMS Expo down in Valencia County. And the reason I'm putting this online is because I want everybody to sort of see it, because albuterol is a really commonly used drug, but unfortunately it's not commonly pushed. I'm all about people utilizing all of their medications to the fullest of their scope to better treat their patients. So what we're going to go over today is how albuterol works. And if you, I, I, my, my mindset is if you guys know how it works, you know what it affects, and you know the contraindications and all these things, you become really familiar with the drug, you won't be afraid to push it because knowledge is power. So let's, let's start out with all this. It's commonly known as albuterol, right? Well, how about albuterol sulfate or even this one, alpha one tert butylamine methyl four hydroxy M exiline alpha alpha prime diol sulfate two to one salt. That is a, that is a mouthful. I'd rather just say all better all because that's essentially what it does. It's this really awesome drug that that cures a lot of stuff or well rather one thing bronchospasm and we're going to go over that one thing so let, let's check it out let, let's start out start out with all this so we know it's a beta 2 adrenergic agonist now adrenergic let's break that word down because it's all about breaking things down the great sage francis once said there ain't no magic in the breakdown baby so let's let's break all this stuff down so we can understand a little better adrenergic Adren. It sounds like adrenal, right? You get that word uh, adrenaline, epinephrine, symp symp sympathetic, the sympathetic nervous system. And that's what you should be thinking. It, it, it has to do with the sympathetic nervous system, that fight or flight. You get scared by something. You're terrified. You uh, stimulate your beta 2. You bronchodilate so you can breathe easier, move air in and out, oxygenate your tissues so you can get out of there so that bear doesn't eat you. And it's an agonist. What does that mean? It's an activator. Just like I said, when you, sim when you activate your sympathetic nervous system, this is what happens. Now... You'll notice to the left, you see this chemical over here, and this is the actual chemical of albuterol. And we'll go over it a little bit later, but what we're gonna pretend is that we've put it on the patient, they're taking their nebulizer, and then it's innervating this nerve. It's moving the signal down, and it's going down this pathway. And yeah, I know this looks like a lot, but we're gonna break it down, and we're gonna we're not gonna try to gloss over anything because I want you guys to understand m most to all of it. So you've given this albuterol. Well, that innervated this adenylate cyclase. Now let's break that down. At the very end, cyclase, ACE. It's it's an enzyme that breaks down ATP adenosine triphosphate, something we've all heard about, right? ATP, oh, you know, you need more ATP in anaerobic or uh, aerobic metabolism. You know, it, it, come, it sort of comes into your mind. Well, it breaks down that into cyclic adenosine monophosphate. So it actually takes some phosphate away. We went from triphosphate to monophosphate. That's all that this enzyme does. A adenylate cyclase takes two phosphates off of adenylene triphosphate and that leads to some other things so we got CAMP or cyclic adenosine monophosphate and we have an increase in that so we've broken down ATP now we have CAMP now what does that lead to that leads to an increase in this protein kinase A and when we have a increase in this protein this protein kinase A we actually have a decrease in the phosphorylation of myosin. And myosin is going to be the main thing that actually helps us contract our smooth muscle. Because that, remember, that's what our lungs are made out of, is smooth muscle. That's what, that's what we're going to be looking at, those striations in those bronchi. So how does it do that? Well, it regulates intracellular ionic calcium concentrations. So with inside your cell, calcium concentration so it lowers those and it, it might seem pretty relevant to everybody listening to this that calcium has a lot to do with muscle contraction 
But how does that work? So we have calcium. It's inside our cell. What, is, what does it have to do to contract a muscle? Well, it has to attach to this other protein called cal modulin. And if we break that word down, because remember, there ain't no magic in the breakdown, baby. Cal modulin, calcium modulated. So that means when calcium attaches to this, it conforms its shape, it, it differentiates its shape, and it sends it down this cascade. And this cascade is a mouthful. We're going to break this down again. The calcium cal modulin myosin remember myosin for contractions light chain kinase complex and if we innervate that if that all gets stimulated by calcium if calcium attached to the cal uh, attaches to the cal modulin goes to myosin in this light chain kinase complex then we actually get smooth muscle contraction we actually get contraction in the muscle with calcium but if we don't have calcium, then it doesn't atta attach to the cal modulate, then it doesn't go down this complex, then we don't get a contraction at all. And that's how we actually get bronchodilation. And if you look at these striations that go across this bronchus, that's what we're looking to, uh, to dilate, to, to relax rather, because when they contract, you can see over here, look at all those contractions. It's really squeezing down. All this inflammatory process is happening. And also, that beta-2 stimulation stimulates a, a, a less response from the mast cells that have to do with uh, in the inflammatory process. So it's a, it's a two-fold mechanism, but we're not going to go into the mast cell part of it. We're only going to worry about this side. So that's actually how it works. That's, that's the actual breakdown of how we get from albuterol to smooth muscle relaxation with inside our bronchus. Now, I left this blank, and, and there's a reason for that, because I wanted to put this up here, and this is actually taking from the New Mexico EMS.org uh, website uh, because I want everybody to see this. This is the drug guidelines, and these have been changed since 2012. So we have albuterol, the class of the drug is a sympathomimetic. Remember, we went over that earlier. Beta 2 selective adrenergic bronchodilator, scope of practice first responder, EMT basic, EMT intermediate, EMT paramedic. Everybody knows why to give it, wheezing, COPD, chronic bronchitis. The only contraindication is hypersensitivity. That's incredibly important. I want you guys to know that. Okay, drug interactions are, are, are relative. If you have beta adrenergic agents that they already have on board, it potentiates the effects. That means it makes them uh, even, even more potent. MAO inhibitors can lead to a hypertensive crisis, and beta adrenergic blockers or beta blockers decrease the effectiveness of this beta agonist. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Here's the here's the bread and butter. Here's the here's the juice of this whole thing. The adult dose, 2.5 to 5 milligrams up to 10 in a vial of 3 uh 3 mLs of NS. Therapy over 15 5 to 15 minutes repeated as necessary. Now, in most protocols Paramedics can give this without a cap, and especially in those long transport times, they continue to give it. And pediatric, it's the same way. The dosage is cut in half. It's 1.5 to 2.5 mg's up to 5 in 3 mLs of NS, repeated as necessary. And remember that this is, this is for uh, first responder to paramedic, and the only thing that you need to be cognizant of is that sometimes it the side effects are dose dose related so if you, if you give major dose you could possibly give some pericardial airway resistance paradoxical airway resistance if they're on their own uh, medications and we just keep dosing them and dosing them and dosing them but that's incredibly rare and most of the time in a hospital these patients are on 24-hour nebulizers. They're, they're on them for an incredibly long time. So I don't want you guys to be conservative with giving albuterol. In the next video, I'm actually going to show you a little bit of something cool that I found out with albuterol and Zopinex. I'll see you in the next video.